Welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. And welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast. And today we are going to talk about arguments and discussions because I think sometimes they can be really good. I remember my old job where I used to work with lawyers all the time and I enjoyed healthy discussions about all kinds of things. It was kind of the way that they, they worked because they were lawyers and, and they were used to building arguments and, you know, finding problems with other people's arguments and challenging people. And it was kind of fun, but in a work situation or in other situations it's not always fun because it descends into a shouting match or people it, it becoming personal it becomes difficult when people won't listen to each other so i started writing you know things not to do when you're when you want to win an argument or when you're having a discussion and i thought it was going to be like a 10 point list or something and then it became a 12 point list and then a 16 point list and in the end i had a 20 point list and they're all things that i witnessed recently um, that people do that make it difficult for those around them to either feel good about themselves or just to get their point across or to be part of the discussion so okay it's 20 points now so I'm going to go through those 20 points in the podcast if you want to see this written down there is a blog article about this as well so I will link the blog article on the podcast page um, and you'll be able to, to look for it there and I need to just check what episode this is because I didn't do it before I started recording Okay, it um yeah, it's the episode hundred and thirty eight. So sorry about that. Episode hundred and thirty eight, and that means that if you go to English with dot com slash podcast slash episode one three eight, you'll also be able to find the link to this article. Okay, so the first thing you shouldn't do, don't raise your voice. And that's important because nobody likes being shouted at. Um, it's it's the same for whether you're at school or wherever you are. If somebody shouts at you, it's like saying that they're more important. And, you know, the person who shouts the loudest isn't necessarily the person with the best ideas. It's just if you have to result to winning the argument by being loudest, then, you know, what, what does that say about you? That doesn't say that you, you have the best ideas. It just means that you're kind of rude <laughs> and you don't have any better arguments. So you just shout at people. So that's, that's not a good way to get people to listen to you, to force people listening to you by hurting their ears. And some people um, don't respond well to that also because... Too much noise around them can be quite distracting for people and it, it can really affect how well people can focus on what's going on. Um, I, I don't like a lot of loud noise around me and I know I'm not the only one. So number two, don't refuse to listen or ignore or acknowledge the other person's point of view. So you may have a completely different point of view to the other person, but they still de deserve to be listened to if you want them to listen to you. So if you want people to show you respect, then you need to show that by showing them respect as well. Um, and refusing to listen to people saying, oh, I'm not listening to you. I'm, I'm not listening. I'm not listening. You know, that's, that's not cool. Um, because it means you think that you're the only person whose opinion is worth listening to. And, you know, you could be wrong. And if you don't listen to anyone else, you won't find that out. And even if you don't change your mind at the end of the argument or discussion, the other person may listen to you if you show that you're willing to listen to them. But if you just go, um, if you're just using the time that they're speaking to, to come up with your next point, or you keep interrupting them, we'll come on to that in a minute. But if you, know, if you do that, then it's, it's not fair. People will think, well, there's no point talking to this person because they don't listen. Um, I, I understand that you don't want to go over the same point again and again and so people feel frustrated by that but if somebody's adding something new to the discussion then you know you really should listen to them because if you don't next time you want them to listen to you they probably won't want to 
Uh, number three, don't talk over other people. It's disrespectful. It used to drive me crazy when I worked in a team with a big team and we had these team meetings and people thought it was okay to do that. Somebody was clearly in the middle of speaking and somebody else started talking over them or louder than them or talking at the t same time as them to see who would back down first. That's just rude. That doesn't mean that what you have to say is better or more important. It just means that you don't have the, the social skills to, to listen to other people. So don't be that person because what you're really saying is you think, I think I'm the most important and everyone else isn't. Um, the Some people will, will feel that this is like directly disrespecting them. Um, and if it's a colleague, that will damage your relationship. If it's, if it's a friend, it will definitely damage your relationship. Um, other people will just think, well, um, if you can't be bothered to listen to me, then I, I can't be bothered to engage with you at all. I'll just withdraw. Um, and unless I feel really strongly about the situation, that's what I do. But then it just means that there are people that I, I just don't bother engaging with now because I know that they won't listen to me. And that's their loss because I could have had something good to say to them or I could have had something to contribute to a project or discussion. Or But I, I won't do it if, if I feel that people won't, won't listen to me or... or or, or give me the time to make my point. Um, number four, don't assume that everyone with another opinion is wrong or stupid. You know, there may be times where they can help you to understand something a bit better that you didn't know, or even help you to strengthen your own, own argument. But if you don't know what the other person's arguments are, then how do you challenge your own? And so people can have stupid opinions, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they are stupid. Maybe they just haven't researched something. Maybe they're missing some information and you could give them that information, but not if you've already communicated, oh, I think this person's an idiot, because would you listen to someone if they just called you an idiot? So, you know, try to separate out the, the idea from the person. Um, and maybe the idea as it stands at the moment isn't a very good idea, but it could be tweak slightly it, it could be changed and then it could work so if you dismiss an idea straight away because you think it's a bad idea um, instead of doing that why not think okay is there anything about this idea that we could use <laughs> and if even if there isn't then communicate that in a way that doesn't make it sound as if you think the person is a complete waste of space it's, it's the idea that's not going to work it's, it's not the person that came up with it and also people have different communication styles. So I struggle with people who can't get to the point. Um, I think sometimes people struggle with my communication style as well. But, you know, we're, we're all different. And if you only listen to people who communicate in the same way as, as you do, then you're limiting yourself in terms of the perspectives and input that you can have on anything that you're trying to find out about. So number five, don't make it personal. You know, an, an idea can be wrong, can be bad, can be stupid, but try to be specific about the idea or like this, this argument is wrong because I have evidence to the contrary or this idea won't work because I've thought of this practical problem. So try and be very specific about the idea or the problem or the suggestion or the argument um, and don't make it personal to the person, personal to the person, don't, don't focus on the person. Because if you say something about them, they're going to feel that it's an attack on them and possibly become defensive, possibly withdraw, possibly never speak to you again. Um, but if you keep it focused on the facts and, and really objective things, then then there's still room to discuss then because it's not aimed at the person. And that could be anything from their language skills to um, their gender to their age you know, you're, you're young, what do you know? Or you're just a woman, you know, all these things are so damaging because they're not really anything to do with what you're actually discussing. They are focused on the person and not the topic. Number six, don't shut down the conversation when others still want to contribute. So that's a bit similar to I'm not listening to you, but I know there are times when you need to move on. For example, if you have a meeting and there's an agenda and you've got a load of stuff to get through on the agenda, but, um, if somebody's got something they want to say, unless there is a really good reason, like you have to go somewhere, then then give them the chance to say that because otherwise you're blocking their chance to contribute. Um, and you're also making it sound as if, well, I've said my part now, so we're done here. And that's not a discussion, that's a monologue. Um, so if even if it means 
agreeing to come back to it to talk about it another time. Again, I'm not talking about going over the same things again and again, but if there's new information, then make time for that. Even if it isn't immediately, then you can come back to it. It doesn't have to be that once you've said your bit, then everybody else has to be quiet because they may have something else good to say and you won't know about that if you don't give them the chance to express it. Number seven, <clears throat> don't monopolize a conversation. So you may have a lot to say and you may use a lot of words to say what you want to say more so than other people. But whether you're with just one of a other person or a load of other people, try not to monopolize a conversation. Try to condense what you want to say down to less words if, if that will help. But also just try to make sure that other people have the chance to speak as well particularly ones who, who don't put themselves forward as much. Um, number eight, don't keep going past the point where it makes sense. So unlike number six, we were saying don't cut it off too soon. Um, if you are just going over the same old ground again and again, that that isn't helpful because um, it's, it's a kind of a waste of time. If people are just saying the same things again, you need to come to the point where, okay, we don't agree about this. Let's just accept that. Um, maybe a decision needs to be made. Maybe that's a vote. Maybe that's the person with the most authority. Who, however it gets done, um, there is a point where having a discussion has, has reached its useful point and going beyond that is, is not helpful. So if you're in that situation, if you've already made a point, don't find lots of other ways to make that point. If you've made a point and people don't want to listen to it, then there's a time to move on because otherwise you're just digging a hole that's deeper and deeper and it's, it's not getting anywhere. Number nine, um, yeah, don't repeat the same thing and again, again, we've just we've just touched on that. It's boring. Um, this can be a point or it can just be like, no, no, no. You know, some people do that and it's infuriating because like you just want to... Um, you, you just want to make them stop. <laughs> um, repeating the same thing over and over again is is kind of what children do. And if you're an adult, then we, you need to be past the stage of what children do. Um, either find another way to say it if you really think people don't understand, but, but don't just repeat the same thing again. Number 10, don't make other people feel that their points aren't valid. And this is a bit this is kind of similar to not making it personal, but this is now focusing on the point. Um, there's a saying people will remember, people will forget what you said, what you did, but they won't forget what you, how you made them feel. And that's true as well, because if you make somebody feel that they've just been completely ignored or disrespected or laughed at or whatever it is, that negative emotion will stay with them in association with you. So whenever they see your name or hear your voice or see you, they'll think, oh yeah, that's the person that made me feel really whatever. They may they may get over it, they may not care, but you know, for some people, it's nobody likes to feel that they haven't been valued in a conversation. So it, it can be that you do know more than somebody else about a situation. It's infuriating that they're talking as if they, they know things and I know from experience that it's hard to talk about it in a reasonable way when you know somebody's just heard something and they haven't actually researched it or they're talking about something that has nothing to do with their life or experience and, and talking as if they know what they're talking about. That is incredibly annoying. But um, there's a way of communicating that, you know, offering other facts that they haven't thought of, offering evidence, whatever you do to make sure that they don't feel um that you didn't at least listen to them before you took the argument apart if it's wrong so um even if you were right in what you were saying if you may need to work with that person again and there are some people that i can think of in my past that i did not enjoy working with at all but there's a way to to keep conversations going where you don't completely alienate that person because even if you're right and the rest of the group room agrees with you that you're right if you've ruined that relationship, whether that's at work or anywhere else, just, just to prove a point, was it worth it? Especially, I mean, in your personal life, it's a bit easier because you can maybe never see that person again and feel fine about it. But if it's at work, you know, there may be a time when you need something from that person or you have to work with them collaboratively on something else. And if you just burn all your bridges and destroy all the relationships just to be right, then at some point being right isn't 
isn't as valuable anymore because you don't have people around you that will be willing to, to work with you or to listen to you. Number 11, don't use language or information that other people won't understand because it's not cool. If you've got a really good vocabulary, then you should be able to adapt that vocabulary to suit your audience. And um, if you use a load of acronyms that the other person hasn't heard of, or even just a load of long words that the other person doesn't understand, you can win the argument by silencing them, but you haven't won them over. You haven't got them to explain why you don't agree with them. Uh, you haven't got them to understand why you don't agree with them. You haven't explained it properly to them. So, you know, if, if you've got a bigger vocabulary, then you've got more responsibility. You've got more words that you can use to get your points across. Um, and you shouldn't make people feel small so that they stop speaking just because you know how to use some long words. Number 12, don't you lose your temper. And this is hard. It's really hard because sometimes people push your buttons. They know the things to say that wind you up and, and sometimes you lose it. I mean, I think everybody has, but the idea is to try and de-escalate the situation before it gets that far. Try and take yourself out of the situation before it gets that far. Because if somebody sees you losing your temper, it, it makes you quite vulnerable um, because they see this really emotional response. And I know it's, it's harder for some people than others to keep a lid on emotions. But um, the, the problem with allowing them to see them isn't just that you become vulnerable, but it's also they know how to do it again. So that can be used against you. So it's also like a self-preservation technique if you don't lose your temper because um, people don't know where your buttons are, then <laughs> they can't push them on purpose. But speaking practically, if there's something you can do to get yourself out of the situation, um, to, to go somewhere else, to cool down a bit, um, then it's it's better to do that. Or if, if there's somebody that you can talk to that can maybe come in and help. Um, or, or, the, or to shut down the conversation. I, I was saying before that you shouldn't do that before people are finished, but if tensions are running really high and people's tempers are beginning to to fray, then sometimes it is good to say, okay, let's let's stop it here because we're not getting anywhere. We can come back to this if that's appropriate, but th there is a point where pulling the plug on a conversation before it gets to the point where people lose their tempers is a good thing because then people can go away, think about their reactions, how they want to respond and come back and, and, and deal with the situation with a clearer head. Number 13, don't ask too many questions without giving the other person a chance to respond. I've seen people do this. It's, it's really bad because um, particularly for some people, it's difficult to process a lot of questions at once. I mean, for anyone, it's difficult because if you ask me five questions and then stop speaking, which one do I answer first? Um, does that mean you don't care about my answer to the questions because you didn't give me the chance to answer them? Um, and, and some people, if, if you know that they have difficulty processing a number of questions at once, then you're setting them up to fail by asking a lot of questions without giving them time to think. And that's not that's not fair either. That's not a good way to participate in a discussion. Number 14, don't be defensive. And this is more about what you think people are saying. So maybe somebody is criticizing a project or an idea and, and you take it personally because you've been working on this for the last few months or the way something was done and that they might have an idea to make it more effective. But you see this is something that you set up so you feel protective towards it or they say they don't like something um, and it's something you feel that you have a part in because maybe you suggested it or it's something that's yours and sometimes people can re respond really defensively because they think that they're being attacked and not the idea or the, the logo or the the name for something um, it's easy to take things personally especially if it's something that you feel invested in or self-conscious about or um, I know there are some subjects that that I have to watch that I don't get defensive about because, um, yeah, they're, they're close to my heart. Um, and I think we're all, we all have those points. I think we just have to ask ourselves the question, you know, is this really, is this really meant as a, an insult to me or is this a more general thing that, that I'm taking personally because I'm sensitive about it? 
And I think one of the best ways to find that out is to ask a further question if you're not sure, you know, what what did you mean by that or why do you think that? Because then maybe it is a personal attack and that will be clear and then at least you know it is rather than assuming that it was. Um, but it could just be that there was a misunderstanding or it could just be that somebody genuinely wants to make things better. I mean, I'm I'm one of those people that often sees ways to make things more efficient or to run better. I'm really a, a kind of systems person. And I've learned how to temper that because if you just go straight into a new job and, and tell the office how to how things could be so much better if we did this and this and this and that's not going to work. But, you know, some people just feel good when they can see a way to make things work better. And people sometimes clash with people like that because the other people see it as a, an insult to them or the way that they do things. And number 15 don't make assumptions about what the other person means because if you're not sure and there's two ways of understanding something the way that is not good for you and the way that is just a um is less um critical then find out exactly what they mean if they say what they mean and you don't like it well then that's that's different but i think sometimes people assume that based on what people say that they support a certain I, I don't know, a certain, certain political group or that they have an agenda when maybe they don't. So if, if you're not sure about something, then it's best to ask rather than to build your response on assumptions because the assumptions may or may not be right. Number 16, don't fill every silence. And this is particularly true because I work a lot of the time with people who don't have English as their native language. But even for people who do, some people need a bit of time, whether that's time to process what you've just told them um, or to think about how they're going to respond to that. Or just to take in all the possible options and, and to work out what they think. Sometimes people do need this time and if you jump in to every silence with more words, that can become quite overwhelming for some people. And it makes it harder for them to engage and be involved in the discussion because they just get words and words and words and there's no chance to think or to have that couple of seconds just to collect themselves and to respond. So maybe you're not like that and you don't understand why other people need this time, but you know, some people do. So don't fill every silence with more words. Give the other person or other people some chance to um, to respond in their own time as well. I don't mean leave it for a, a few, like five minutes or something, but you know, silence doesn't have to be a bad thing. It's just a time when we can think about what we've just heard and how we're going to respond to it. And sometimes including silence is a good thing because it, it makes people be a bit less hot headed sometimes if you just take a couple of, a few seconds to reflect before you start again. Number 17, don't make generalizations. So this carries on with the point I made earlier about being specific. So don't say like, oh, you always do that. You never listen to me. Um, you know, always and never are two words that are not really good in, in discussions like this because they're, you know, it's kind of writing the person off. Oh, you always say that. You always get things wrong. You never, I, I don't know have better ideas whatever it is always and never try to avoid them try to be really specific about um even if you want to bring in other examples like oh we had this conversation last week as well so you know you can refer to other things that have happened but that again is a specific situation last week rather than you always do that because that, that just becomes personal attack again, rather than bringing in other examples of perhaps the, the same problem. And sometimes people don't see the similarities. If you've got quite different situations that are similar for you, they, they might not be similar for the other people as well. Number 18, don't talk before you know what you want to say. And I'm not saying you have to write out beautiful bullet points before you start speaking, but if you're going to contribute something, then at least know what your basic point is, because the, the problem that I find with this is that sometimes people, especially people who do talk a lot um, and who tend to dominate conversations, will start talking and thinking at the same time as they're talking. And it A, takes longer because they're still thinking of what they want to say. Um, but B, there might be people who are waiting, who know what they want to say and you know, let them go first while you're thinking about what you want to say. Don't always jump in to make sure that you have everyone's attention before you know what it is that you want to say. 
number 19 don't ignore the quiet people so this is again you know people are quiet for different reasons sometimes they genuinely don't have anything to say sometimes they don't want to compete if other people are shouting and getting louder then some people just won't want to compete with that um some people use less words so they they only speak when they have something to say some people are shy and they need encouraging out of their shells and and persuading that it is okay to to, to join in some people need to be encouraged to do that otherwise they they won't volunteer to do it themselves but if you've got maybe five or six people in a discussion try to include the people that haven't said very much or ask them what they think um because they may have a really good idea and and also it's inclusive so you don't want to it doesn't it shouldn't be the people that, that shout the loudest that get listened to the most and the last one is a bit of a an extended point 20 because it's not just one point it's it's don't forget to ask yourself these questions so for if you're having a discussion or an argument or whatever it is what do you want to achieve is it just you want somebody to do something to agree to something to agree not to do something or just to listen to you just to, to hear your point what is it that you want to get out of it at the end if you had to write down what do you want the other people around you to do or know or think or or have listened to what, what is that one thing that you want to get out of it is it achievable because if it's not maybe having the whole discussion is, is kind of pointless anyway i can think of some people that for example hmm, political discussions it, it's just not worth discussing anything with them because i know they won't listen so i'm not going to do it um i can respect people who have different opinions to mine but if if i think that other person won't even listen then for me it's it's not worth it if it's something at work and you need people to listen because you're you know you you won't be able to do your job if you haven't got some information or got something done then that 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 is is worth it or is achievable if you maybe bring more people in or bring more information but you know ask yourself is it is it worth it is it worth a hassle <laughs> and if it is then you can move on to um, well, is it worth it? Is is it worth damaging a relationship for being right about a point that, in the grand scheme of things, isn't that important? Um, and that's true whether it's a business or a personal relationship. You know, is it worth damaging that relationship just to be right about one point? And um, is there anyone else who can help? I don't mean bringing a load of colleagues to gang up on someone, but if if somebody else would be able to explain it in a way that the other person would listen to um if there was someone who had more experience or something um then is there anyone who can help you if you're feeling that you're not getting anywhere and what does the other person respond well to so would they feel better if they had more information would they feel better if they could if you imagine how they're feeling so if, if they're concerned about how something will will actually work out in practice could you explain the steps that will be taken to make it seem a bit less daunting or unfamiliar could you give them some something to read in their own time or could you just give them some time like i, I mentioned before sometimes people just need a bit of time before they agree to something or commit to something so what kind of things does the person usually respond well to and can you do any of those things to make it easier for them to understand what you're saying or to to give them some space because sometimes that's all people need so i'd be interested to know if you have any other tips for i mean 1 to 19 were things you shouldn't do and and 20 was really questions that you should ask but do you have anything else to add if you do let me know um, you can send an email to podcast at englishwithkirsty.com. English with Kirsty is English with K I R S T Y. Or you can fill in the comments form on the show notes page. So if you go to um, englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 138, then there's the show notes page there and there's a comment form on there as well. So I hope that's useful and I hope that in the coming days and weeks you will have discussions that are productive and useful and objective and not like some of the discussions that I've discussed in the points in this podcast. Have a good week and have fun learning and communicating in English or any other language for that point because um, 
yeah, th these aren't specific to English. If you're having discussions in other languages, these are relevant too. So, yeah, I hope that's useful. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes. 